Now that we're familiar with some of the basic properties of entropy, let's explore some examples to build your intuition for what entropy is all about. One of my favorite examples is 20 questions. The game of 20 questions. This is that game that you play when you're in the car and you've played I spy two to the Google number of times and you're bored out of your mind and the game is I think of some object maybe I think of Darth Vader or something and you have to guess what I'm thinking and you get to ask yes or no questions and your objective is to try to guess what I'm thinking in 20 questions, but ideally you want to even get it as guess it in as few questions as possible. So how does this tie in with entropy? Let's say that the set of all the possible objects I may be thinking of is this script X. So maybe it's uh, dog, cat, uh, Darth Vader, some huge set of things, maybe even inf maybe even infinite set of things. And let's say that x is what I'm thinking of, it's a random variable, and it's distributed according to some probability distribution, p. So p is basically, this is something inside my brain that is randomly governing what object I'm going to pick. Let's say this is fixed. Yeah, of course my brain is changing in reality, but let's say that this is fixed. Now, when we take some, you know, x is some random variable, say we draw some uh, value of x from this distribution, and you have some strategy for guessing what I'm thinking, and let's say that q, this is all just informal, let's say that q is the number of questions that it takes you to guess what I'm thinking. So Q is a random variable that depends on X. Now it turns out, this is so cool, it turns out that the entropy of X is essentially the best you can do in this game. In other words, the number of questions that you have to ask on average to figure out what I'm thinking of is essentially you know the very best strategy that you could do on average it would take you h of x question it would take you the entropy of x number of questions to figure out what I'm thinking so a little more precisely the entropy of x is a lower bound on the expected number of questions Q and you can always do better on average than the entropy plus one. Now that should blow your mind. That is truly astonishing any huge set of things I'm thinking of, any complicated probability distribution in my head, and we can quantify precisely how well you can do. This alone, this fact alone, should convince you there is something really, truly remarkable about this quantity this entropy. So that's 20 questions. That, that's sort of a preview. We're going to prove this eventually. But that's a preview of cool things to come. Let's look at another example. Another example that uh, this one's a little more concrete, a little simpler. Maybe we'll start to build your 
intuition in a more concrete way. So the next example we're going to look at is the shell game. Another game. And in the grand tradition of using gambling examples for probability theory, the shell game is the game you play when you go to the carnival and there's that sketchy guy behind the table and he's got these three, you know, he's got this table and there's this, you know, sketchy guy and he's got three shells and they're exactly the same. You can't tell the difference. They're indistinguishable. And you go, you go to the, you know, you go to the carnival, you go up to this guy and the game is you pay a dollar, it doesn't matter which, you know, maybe pay some dollar or something to play the game and he has a marble maybe it's a blue marble he puts it under one of the shells and he shuffles the shells all around and you can't figure out where the shell with the marble under it went so maybe it ends up that the marble is under under this guy but you can't see it because it's under the shell and you have to guess which shell the marble is under. If you get it right, you win a prize. If you're wrong, then you you know you lose your money. So let's attach a little notation to this. Let's call let me make a little space here. Let's call this whatever it ends up as. You know whatever order the shells end up as. Let's call the one on the left. Uh, let's associate random variable x with the one on the left, y with the one in the middle, and z with the one on the right. And let's say that uh, let's say that x takes the value one if the marble is under it and zero otherwise, and the same for all for each of the others. So each of these is some random variable taking quantities in zero or one. And let's suppose further that the probability, let's put some probabilities on these. Let's say the probability that x is 1, probability that the marbles under x is a half, probability that y, and suppose we know this, right? Suppose we know somehow these probabilities. And the probability that z is 1 is 0. So somehow we know that whatever he's doing, it never happens that the marble is under z. The probability that the marble is under z is zero. And now let's think about if we could ask one question. You know, we have some uncertainty about the state of this system, where the marble is at. If we could ask one question to help us figure out what we should guess, what should we ask? Let's say, well, say we maybe one question we might ask is, is the marble under X? And maybe he tells us honestly, and then we get to guess from there. Well, think about the question is the marble under the third shell? Is z equal to 1? It would be kind of silly to ask that question, right? Because we know that z is always equal to 0. The probability that z is 1 is 0. So it's never under this one. Why would we ever ask that question? That would be a silly question. In other words, another way to put that is we have zero uncertainty about this random variable. And so that's zero uncertainty in quotes. Or we gain zero, we gain zero information in quotes. Just intuitively. We gain nothing by asking this. On the other hand, if we ask, what, is it under X? We certainly get some information. 
well, actually, it determines which one uh, it's under. So how can we relate this to the entropies? Well, let's look. What is the entropy of Z? Remember the formula. Entropy of Z, well, in this case, Z is a Bernoulli random variable. And if you remember from our, we already calculated it above here, if you remember from this formula right here, this was the entropy of a Bernoulli random variable. And in fact, we drew the graph, so we can we don't even have to compute it. We know that when p equals zero, which it is in this case, then the entropy is zero. So right away, we know that the entropy of z is zero. And also, the entropy of x is, well remember x uh, is 1 with probability 1 half. X is also a Bernoulli random variable. And so looking back at our graph here, we see that the entropy of P, or H of P, when P is 1 half is 1. So the entropy of X is 1. And the same thing for Y. Y is 1. So this quantifies this intuitive notion that we had about how much information or how much uncertainty we have about these random variables, or in particular random variable z, and how much information we would gain by asking or by learning what the quantity of, of one of these is. We gain nothing by learning what z is, but we gain something, I mean one you know, one bit or whatever the you know the, those units mean, one unit of uh, information about X, and it certainly uh, accords with our intuition that in fact we do gain quite a bit of information if we learn the value of X. So that's a simple example to give you a sense for why the entropy, I mean it doesn't nail down exactly why that quantity in particular is the right one in some sense, but it starts to give you a feeling for uh, that it's at least reasonable and it accords with our intuition at least in this special case. Next time I'm going to give you an even more uh, precise uh, justification or example for why the entropy takes a particular form that it does.